We learned about how to write equations using slope-intercept form, but there's also a formula where you use a slope and the point, not just the intercept, any random point. And point-slope form looks like this right here, and the x1 and the y1 just represent the random point. So let's um, look over on the left. A linear equation is written in the form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 is in point slope form because it's using a, any random point on the line and the slope. If you look at the picture, you'll see that there's a random point label. This is it right here, and they've labeled it x1, y1. And then we could find the slope, or they'll give us the slope, or we could calculate the slope, and then we can find the formula. So you see how this line doesn't hit the y? Well, it hits it, but they're not showing us where the y-intercept is. We don't need it because we have this point right here. So let's see how that works. We're going to write the formula in point slope form, and it's got to pass through negative 6, 1, and has a slope of 2 thirds. So if they want it in point slope form, the first thing I'm going to do is write the point slope formula. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So now I plug in what I know. Well, I know that y1 and x1 represent the point. This is x1 and this will be y1 because this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate. So I'll plug them in. y minus 1 equals, they tell me the slope is 2 thirds, x minus, and they tell me that x1 is negative 6. So I can write it as x minus negative 6 but that just looks weird, so I'm going to turn this into plus 6. So although it doesn't look like any of the forms that we've ever done, this is the equation of that line written in point-slope form. In the next question, we're going to take that form and then figure out how to turn it into slope-intercept form, but that's as far as example 1 wanted us to go. In example 2, we still need the slope and the point. So let's figure out the slope. A long, long time ago, earlier in this chapter, I told you that there's a slope formula, and it goes like this. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and that's the slope formula. So let's label our points. This will be x1, y1, and this will be x2, y2. So now you just plug in your numbers. Negative 2 minus 4 divided by 5 minus 2. That gives me negative 6 over 3, which is negative 2. So I know that the slope is negative 2. Now I'll use my point slope formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And then we plug in y minus, well, where's y1? Well, look at that. It's labeled right here. 4 is y1 and 2 is x1. So they have it labeled, or we have it labeled. So it's y minus 4 equals, I just calculated that the slope is negative 2, times x minus, and I labeled earlier that x1 is 2. So now I have to distribute from chapter 1, remember distributing. So I get y minus 4 equals negative 2x plus 4. Last step, drop a line, add 4 to both sides. y equals negative 2x plus 8. Last one together. You finish parasailing and are being pulled back to the boat. After two seconds, you are 25 feet above the boat. And we have to write and graph an equation that represents my height 
above the boat after x seconds. So I need the slope and I need a point. Well, if they tell me that x represents seconds and y represents my height in feet. So 2 represents x, 1, and 25 represents y, 1, because y represents feet and x represents seconds. The only other thing I need for the point slope formula is the slope. Do you see the slope anywhere, my rate of change? It's right here in the picture, 10 feet per second, and since I'm going down, the slope is negative. So I know that m equals negative 10, and now I'll plug in my point slope formula. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. y minus 25. equals negative 10 times x minus 2. Distribute y minus 25 equals negative 10x plus 20 add 25 to both sides and you get y equals negative 10 X plus 45 we also have to graph it and if X represents seconds and Y represents feet it doesn't make sense for me to go into either of the negative quadrants so I'm gonna stay in this first quadrant and graph. Um, let's see. I could probably go by fives. So five, ten, fifteen, etc. And this could go by ones. So I'm gonna graph it using slope intercept form. So let let me put a dot at zero forty five. And the slope is negative ten over 1. But negative 10 doesn't mean down 10 because I didn't go by 1's. It really means down 2 boxes. So we'll go down 2 boxes, 1 to the right. That's 10. Down 2 more boxes, 1 to the right. That's 10 more. 2 boxes, 1 to the right. 2 boxes, 1 to the right. Connect it. Oh, whoops, don't go into the negatives and label the line y equals negative 10 x plus 45 at what height were you parasailing well you pa you started parasailing right here at this point which is the point 0 45 so that means that 0 45 represents 0 seconds have passed so you are 45 feet at the beginning if you have any questions write them down and ask me when you see me next